Hey, y'all. I'm sewing together my asking blocks. I've got most of them made. I want to go ahead and start sewing some together. So here I am working on it. I'm glad to get this done. I like afghans. I like making them, but they're so big and they take up so much time that a lot of times I get bored, real bored with working on the same thing day after day after day, especially when it's something that's going to take you weeks and weeks to get done. And sometimes I'll think, well, I shouldn't have started that. But it's going to be worth it when it's done. It's going to be beautiful. And then I'll... And one of these days I'll die and leave it behind and who knows what will become of it. <laughs> That's how that goes too. That's how that goes too. The people that don't crochet, when they come, a, come across <clears throat> crocheted afghans and doilies and, and the embroidery stuff, whatever's handmade, Stuff they might, well, so they might find in an abandoned house, or if it's if a, a woman passes away, she leaves there's all the stuff that she made, and these people they think, oh, it's just junk, it's just old fashioned out of date, just junk, it was her hobby, just junk. They haul them off to the dump. Afghans that are perfectly fine, nothing wrong with them. A lot of these young people, they don't think nothing of it. Just throw that stuff away. They, they don't have the first idea of how much time and work goes into making this stuff, not to mention the cost of your materials. They don't have any, they just don't have the appreciation for things that are handmade because they born and grew up in a society where everything's disposable. You get tired of something, throw it away and go buy a new one. And that, you know, it'd be nice if the parents would teach them different from that, but <clears throat> a lot of the parents nowadays are the same way. They don't know. They're just as ignorant as your kids are. I'm probably the last generation that has appreciation for handmade things. I'm probably the last in that generation. <clears throat> so if any of you young folks see this video, you try to appreciate the time work goes into something handmade. And this afternoon I'm making there ain't another one like it in the whole wide world. It's unique because I designed it myself. And that makes it even more valuable. But I just like to make things. I've, I've liked making things my whole life. I remember once when I was a kid in grade school, I might have been in the fourth or fifth grade, probably the fourth grade. I was still a little kid. I wanted to make some rag dolls. So I tore up an old bed sheet. It was a bed sheet or an old pillowcase, one or the other. <clears throat> and you took a needle and thread and just crudely sewed them arms and legs together. And it was just the crudest thing you ever saw. You, you, it looked like a caveman made it. <laughs> Of course, I didn't really know how, but I just wanted to make rag dolls, so I just did, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. You feel like creating something, just haul off and create something, even if it ain't great, even if it ain't, uh, you know, high quality or whatever. It don't matter. If it's handmade, especially if it's handmade, why? That's worth something. That's worth something.
with my granny and my aunts, they, when we still lived in, in Imperial, and I'd, I'd go over to my granny's house all the time because we used to live down the road from her. And, uh, and they got me started on how to thread a needle and how to work the needle in, in and out, in and out, and how to tie a knot. I was, I was a preschool kid back then. I was about three years old. Three, three and a half years old, and they taught me how to do that, so I knew how to do that. You know, kids are not too young to learn how to start doing things. You start with them when they're three years old and you start teaching them things. They're not too young. They can do it. And that inspired me to have an interest in sewing. So when I got older, I started doing more sewing. When I hit the age of about, <clears throat> about 12, that's when I really started being interested in sewing. And my dad gave me the 1955 sewing machine to uh, learn to sew on. And I used that machine for years and years and years and years. I made all kinds of stuff. And then uh, when I was 12, once again, when I was 12, um, we had gone out, come out west here to visit Ken folks, and one of my aunts taught me, got me started on the very basics of crochet. Showed me how to hold a crochet hook and how to get started, start your chain, make a chain, and then how to do the single crochet. She started me on that basic, and. I, I didn't forget it, and I, I was very interested in it. I was hooked from that very first time she showed me how to do that. I mean, I've been crocheting all my life except for I took a 10-year break from crocheting because of carpal tunnel syndrome. And then when I got to missing after about 10 years, I got to missing crochet, so here I am doing it again. Sometimes I I have to go with two or three days. I'll go two or three days without crocheting to let my wrist uh, rest. If my wrist to go to snap, making that snapping sound, and that's a red flag. <laughs> red flag it means I need to quit crocheting for a little while. And, my, and nowadays, sometimes it's right in your shoulder joint, boy, it hurts. So I'm just getting wore out. <clears throat> now I've got to go into here and hook onto this one over here. <clears throat> See, let me get that pulled in there. Sure, I'm hooking these corners together right here. If you have a, I've got a four-way intersection here where I'm hooking these together in the corners. So I'm gonna go through there one time and pick up this middle thing here and go over into this over here that way I've got them hooked together and four corners hooked together pretty good there now now I've got to start hooking these together now you know all my life because you know, people find out you sew and crochet, and then as soon as they find out, the ball say, "Oh, will you make me this? Will you make me that? Will you make me this?" Oh my God! The whole world just lines up, expecting you to make them something. The whole world, instead of learning how to do something for themselves, 
I don't have the patience. That's their number one excuse. I don't have the patience. Well, you know, I didn't have the patience at the very start either, but I learned patience by doing it. You learn patience by doing it. You'll never have the patience for anything if you don't apply yourself. You have to apply yourself to the task and develop your patience. I'll tell you what I don't have patience for. These people say, will you make me this, will you make me that? And then sometimes they want you to do it for free, and then sometimes they say, well, I'll pay you. And you know what, I don't care if you pay me or not, I don't want to. I don't want to make everybody this and that and this and that because I've already got all my projects lined up. I'm busy. I've got my, my plate full. And, um, and I'm not plumb selfish about it. I make things and I give, sometimes I give things to people for a gift. Just because just I want to give them something. But you know what? You know, I put my money and my time and work into something. I don't have to give stuff away to people. I don't want to. I don't have to. And I don't expect people to be giving me stuff all the time just because I want it. I see something I want to. Oh, give it here. No. No, that's rude. That is so rude, and there's a lot of rude people these days that don't have any sense. The parents didn't teach them any manners. Ugh. We live in an age where anything goes. That's not a, and it's not a good. Not good. I, I don't like people, uh, trying to take advantage of me like that, and I don't like people giving me assignments. Well, I want you to make me this for so-and-so. I don't care what you want it for. I don't care. I'm busy. I don't want to. Now, when I was young, I was afraid to say no to anybody. I don't know why. I was just scared to death to say no to anybody. So I'd knock myself out, making all kinds of stuff for people. And uh, most of the time, they wouldn't pay me nothing. They just expected me to make it free and give it to them for free. And I'd be so mad. Oh, I'd be so mad. It'd make me so mad. I finally, you know, as the years went by, I finally started saying no. I finally started getting over my fear of saying no. And now I'll just say no. But, you know, sometimes I'll say yes impulsively because I want to please people. Because I don't want to disappoint people. And especially when it's a good friend that asked me to. And, and it'll be something, you know, if it's, it's something I don't want to do. So what happens is I put it off, put it off, put it off, to, and it just don't get done. Well, if, if I could learn to do this stuff, and I ain't no genius, if I could learn to do it, and if I could develop the patience... So can anybody else. Anybody else can do it too. So there's that. Okay. Well, uh... What am I doing right here? Okay. I gotta get that in there. I'm at a I'm at a crossroads again here. I gotta put this stuff together here. Here in the corner. Yeah.
Ich bin nicht mehr Well, we went to, uh, we went to Alpine, Texas. Was it yesterday? No, it was the day before yesterday. And, uh, it was Saturday. To a couple of thrift stores there, and I didn't really have anything I really wanted. It was all right, but I... Well, I I got some uh, cotton bath mats and some cleaning rags and some hand towels. Got that and was glad to get that. Because, you know, you use them. We have a Swiffer, Swiffer floor cleaner. And instead of buying those pads, disposable pads, which gets expensive, I use uh, cotton rags and cleaning rags. And I just wash them. They get dirty. Of course, they get dirty. So I just wash them and use them again. Works just fine. Works just fine. You save you some money that way. What else? Did you get anything else? I guess that was about it. <clears throat> so, I ordered some stuff from Timu. <clears throat> that takes some good. That's in about three weeks to, well, it's supposed to be, my stuff is supposed to arrive between June 11th and the 15th, so it'll probably be close to the 15th. It usually takes me a while. I got my husband, I ordered him a shirt. He needs some nice shirts. Not fancy ones, but some nice ones that he can dress up a little bit when he wants to dress up a little bit going to a friend's party or something. And I ordered a pair of uh, curtains for this living room. <coughs> Real pretty ones. You see these one cute living room curtains here? Them old dark blue. They're just as ugly as they can be. <clears throat> I don't like ugly curtains. <laughs> but these up ones that's coming are pretty. Well, come on now. What happened there? to uncurl my thread a little bit. <clears throat> Let's see. I ordered that. Oh, and two men's rings. They've bird, got bird heads on them. Real neat looking rings. And uh, one for my husband and one for my brother. And uh, I ordered some yarn from uh, Mary Maxim. Yeah, uh, she had some, she had Red Heart yarn, still does, but it's um, pretty good, cheaper than uh, what Red Heart had on sale. I mean, what uh, Harshner's had on sale. So I scarfed up some of that. But you know what? By the time they charge you for sales tax and shipping and handling, you haven't really saved much. You don't really save 
much, but the fact that they put it on sale, it helps to pay for the shipping and handling sales tax. So, I've been wanting some teals and aquas and those kind of colors. I ordered some turqua and some stuff like that. And I ordered some, what did I order? Some yellow? I might have ordered some yellow, I don't remember. <clears throat> you can't hardly find yellow, good color yellow, in any brand. It's either too pale or too bright. Or it's just uh, too gold. A nice straight yellow is hard to find. For some odd reason. Well. <coughs> well, that's about it. Y'all tell me your experiences if you've had people always bothering you to make them this, make them that. And uh, you, I'd like to hear about your experiences with that because it aggravates me because <laughs> I, I don't, I mean, I have stuff that I make for sale and I put it aside and there's the stuff for sale. I don't want to have to take special assignments because if I don't feel like doing something, I just don't feel like it. But uh, anyway... Y'all tell me what y'all's experiences have been with that sort of thing. I'd like to hear about it. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.